Good afternoon. Today is Friday, and I'm chilling like a villain at home. Finished my work. Got to work the weekend. Got to keep working. So I just seen, and I couldn't believe what I just read in the news about the Supreme Court of Canada overruling the sex offenders registry in favor of the sex offenders. So I'll let a few people jump on here. So I took a step back, 10 step, 10 steps back actually. So now the sex registry, if you have been charged with a sexual offense, you could apply uh, whatever, right? You don't have to. The government has one year to overturn the ruling on the sex registry. The Supreme Court ruled that it was wrong. So, had to have been a liberal judge by far, or a bunch of liberal judges. That's just wrong. And everybody knows me in my case. So, here you have somebody who gets caught with marijuana. If they're growing it, if they're selling it, okay, they get a lifetime ban on weapons for a nonviolent offense even though there's no weapons even found. So that makes zero sense, right? Not that I need weapons. My weapon's in my hand. It's called my phone. And when I go live, that's the weapon of choice. The Murray Curry Canty is from Detroit. You're watching. How you been, buddy? I seen your little, your, your baby's getting big. Bill Lesser, the Bills fan. So with that being said, With the sex registry being overturned, okay, uh, the government has one year to implement whatever. But also, if you know anything about politics, they could use a thing called the notwithstanding clause. They did it in uh, the Omar Kadar case for a second, right? And notwithstanding, whatever, right? They didn't, they didn't even use it in the Omar Kadar case. But they could have. <laughs> so, beware... Okay, it just it just took a, a I'm just flabbergasted by that what I just read and it's the truth I, I did the research on it okay so the Supreme Court ruled in favor of overturning the sex registry for sex offenders so we now you won't know who's who well it's not us anyways we don't have a sex registry where we could open it up publicly but for the police who's who not cool at all man Get one love. Demurray, you know what? I miss you. You got to come over to Canada. You will smoke some big joints when you come over. You could throw uh, Richard Clement Sr. In, in your trunk. He comes over and sees me. We just haven't seen him in uh, two years due to this COVID shit. Right? Uh, but also, we have the uh, bullshit going on in Ottawa with the convoy. Okay, and they're looking into it. The inquiry is what they're calling it. I call it fucking diarrhea. Okay, it's a bunch of bullshit. Okay, they're saying anybody uh, that was down there, part of the convoy. I was down there. I wasn't really part of the convoy. Okay, I, I sympathize with the convoy and what they were up to. But me, I was down there because in protesting over the cost of fuel and the cost of fuel and the cost of fucking living, period, in this country. That's why I was down there. So you don't have the right to protest when the government says, hey, guess what? Uh, you're, they just ramble it all in as a convoy. There was many different groups down there in Ottawa, and I was there. And I seen the different groups that were there. And, you know, when you get tainted government like we have, and that's what we have is a tainted government, uh, in the inflation and everything else. I said it in January. The price of gas, it wasn't that high. The price of food was going up a little bit, but the price of rent, that's been going up for a couple of years, okay? And the homeless shelters and everything else, and the, you know, nobody's got any money for anything, right? Uh, it's sickening. It's very sickening. So you don't have the right to protest. If you do, and it's a big protest, they call you the convoy. If you're down there and the, uh, there's a, a, a pickup truck that runs diesel fuel, you're part of the convoy. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Trudeau, you should do the same thing as that trust in England and just resign. She was the Prime Minister of England for six weeks, okay, and uh, 
this tent by the uh, everybody else in England didn't like her, and guess what? She got ruled out. But then if he resigns, then we have uh, the interim uh, prime minister, and that would probably be the meth head, Christina Freeland, okay, uh, who's, she's got to be on something. Now, Adderall is legal meth. And if you see her in any interviews, she's always jumpy, 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 right? Her head's going. She's agreeing with everything like this, right? Head's going. This, okay, you're on fucking drugs. I know a junkie when I see one. And I've been around junkies. And I know what junkies look like. And she's a junkie. Period. Right? So the government, you know what? If you stand up, and that's part of our constitution. We have that in our charter of rights, okay? Uh where if you don't like what the government's doing, you have a right to protest the government. But once you do, our government throws you in as a convoy and they seize your bank accounts and they do all kinds of crazy shit. We just seen it in Ottawa, okay, in January. And like I said, I was there and, you know, they, I have sympathy for all the truckers because the price of fuel was going up and all kinds of shit in the mandates and all that shit that the, the forced vaccinations, all that Fuck, all day long, I stand with them. But I was down there over the cost of living, the housing crisis, okay, the cost of food, the cost of everything, everything, and what we pay in tax at the end of the day. You know, I'm working seven days a week, and I've been working seven days a week, and I can work 12 hours a day. Now, I just just found out because I sat uh, in a course, my work just sent me to a... Uh, uh, Joint Health and Safety in the uh, uh, the Green Book, the Ministry of Labor book. And I asked the question uh, to the instructor, how many hours can somebody work? And there's really no set hours. You can work 100 hours a week as long as it's agreed upon between you and your employer, right? So I've been working some cr pretty crazy hours. Anybody that knows me knows. Okay, I've been working 70, 80-hour work weeks. Who does that? Me, at 52, and I do my job very well. I like what I do. But that's what you have to do to survive, right? Uh, yeah, I eat good. I live decent. But I have to. You know, if, if I went down to 40 hours a week, you're going to create a criminal. And that's what's going to happen here with poverty. As inflation rises and we go into a recession, you're going to create criminals. Now, guys that used to make uh, $1,000 a week, that's 33% of the population making $1,000 take home. That sounds like a lot of money, but guess what? It's not. When my grocery bill is $500 a week, my grocery bill is $500 a week for me, my wife, my son, my two daughters, their boyfriends, they come over to eat. Uh, I got three dogs. I got three dogs, two cats. Everybody's hungry, right? So you got to feed them. So my, on the lower end, it's $500 a week. So somebody making $1,000 a week, it, if they don't own a house and have a low mortgage payment, you're fucked, plain and simple. And with the rising cost of everything else, gas, food, housing, clothing, you name it, uh, you're going to create criminals. And they were law-abiding, working-class people, the 33% that were making $1,000 a week take-home, right? I couldn't survive on $1,000 a week take-home. I just couldn't. You'd be creating criminals, and it's sad, very sad. You know, $52,000 a year take-home, and you can't live in this country? <laughs> so imagine the percentage that's making under $52,000 a year take-home. Honestly, you got to make at least sixty to 70000 take-home per year to live decent in this country, and it's only going to get worse, right? Very, 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 very bad things are going to happen very soon to a lot of people. And, uh, you know, if you stand up and try and fight for those rights, what happens at the end of the day? You're part of the convoy. Trudeau's got to go. When you got 24% of the population and they, that don't even, they, that, that voted him in, that's 24% of the population, if he even has that, okay, he's got to go. The only reason he's there is because the NDP gave him the support in the House of Commons, which is a bunch of bullshit, okay? But they did, and that's why he's the Prime Minister of Canada. If the NDP were man enough to stand up and say, hey, you know, change your ways, or we're going to... They could call an election, the NDP. They have the power between them and the Conservatives to call an election. The Conservatives want an election. Trudeau don't. 
the liberals, they want free dental care. Now, I get it. I'd love free dental care. I got free dental care. I work for a living. I pay for it you know, with my benefit package. So me and my family are covered under that benefit package. Now, the biggest problem is this that I see. We can't even take care of our own people in a hospital setting. You go to the hospital, you call an ambulance, it's black, uh, code black to call it. The ambulance is where you're waiting 12 hours for an ambulance to come and get you. Now, if our health care is that broken, you actually think we can afford dental care? Jagmeet Singh's got to go too. Very, very, very sad. We just had our politics in the city of Windsor, and we had the lowest, one of the lowest turnouts. 30% of the people turned out to vote. And I hear a lot of people bitching, how did Dilkins get in? Did you vote? You don't like Dilkins, you could have voted him out, right? Uh, there's a f quite a few people that I can't believe that got voted back in. And it's it's sad, eh? It's very sad. So you got to get out. Yeah, the hospitals. What's up? Hope all's good. Yep, everything's good. Chris, everything's good. I'm uh, back on days. I'm working uh, unlimited hours. Unlimited hours, and I'm not joking you. Shit's got to get done, right? And uh, I got the drive. I do it right. That's it. Makes me somewhat successful in life. I have the drive, and I got a good job, and I got a great opportunity that works out for me and my family, right? And I got to do what it what I have to do. Even Andrew Masonville, he cooks these chicken wings. I'm dying to try your damn chicken wings, buddy. I see you're watching. Okay, I don't even have the time to get down to where you're you're doing your your cook offs every week, right? And but I got to find some time to do something, right? Uh, it's all work and no play for this guy, right? Uh, but I'm at, I'm, at, I'm at the limit where, you know, it is what it is. At 52, I just want to work. I just want to support my family. Live happy, right? That's the dream. That's the dream, and a lot of people are not going to be able to live that dream in this country. You know, luckily for my son, he's got his own basement apartment, his own graded entrance to get in and out, and... Uh, he sat down there. He's got a pad for the rest of his life, as long as I own my house, All right? Uh, so he'll never have to move. My daughters are all moved out, but they come over and eat. Like I said, my grocery bill is huge. You know, five hundred is on the low end per week. You know, some meals are five hundred dollars, depending on how we're eating, right? I want to do uh, seafood boils and stuff like that. That shit ain't cheap. I want to do T-bone steaks every week. That ain't cheap. And the government says, oh. This is how out of touch the government is when it comes to food prices. All the, uh, with the cost of food and the inflation and everything else, food's gone up 20%. You're wrong. Some food items have gone up 400%. Right? Uh, I looked in the uh, Great Canadian Superstore margarine. I, I buy butter, but margarine. I remember a tub of margarine, uh, just a little one, was only $2.50 last year. It's $7.50 now. So do the math. And that's the markup on it, right? And they're blaming it all on Ukraine and everything else in the world, this and that. Listen, we have the oil, we have the gas, we have the reserves, we have the gold, we have diamond mined up in uh, De Beers. It's up in Ottawa, Piscat. The De Beers mine. We mine everything here. We got the nickel, we got the copper, we got everything in the ground. That's our shit. We got the water. That's our shit. But the government thinks it's theirs, and they just take and take and take and take, right? And the people are not getting it. You know, Trudeau says, oh, I give you GST, GST check. Mine was 160 bucks. To fill my truck's 220 So he gave me a half a tanky, half a tank of gas. It was my GST check. Oh, we got giving you a carbon tax. Oh, yeah, he gave me a carbon tax check, too. That one was for, what... $175. Still not even a tank of fuel. So it's a bunch of bullshit. You know, and if you stand up for your rights, like I said, they put you in the pot as the convoy. And it, it's pretty sad. So, you know, like I was there protesting. Everybody knew my protest. I was live. I was saying, well, I was down there. I was down there looking. I'm here for the cost of living, the housing crisis. People living in tents in this country, okay, in, in the winter time, and there's lots of that going on, but you're going to expect a lot more coming, and there's going to be a lot of turmoil before it gets better. That's a fact. You know, if you can't run the country, <laughs> resign. 
he thinks he's, it's all honky dory for him when he's paying six thousand dollars a night for motels, six grand a night, on the backs of our of us the Canadian people, right? So, it's wrong, one hundred percent wrong. I don't side with the liberals, and I don't side with those judges that just ruled today with the Supreme Court on the uh, uh, the sex sex registry to be overturned, and the government has a year to overturn the sex registry. So you're gonna have all these sexual deviant bastards out there, okay, that are no longer on a registry because there is no registry. They're demolishing it. But you're gonna have a bunch of people like me. I'm pretty pretty law abiding citizen. Okay, I like to play with the weed when back in the day, this and that. And I got caught. And I done prison time for marijuana, but I got a lifetime ban for weapons for pot. That's like walking down the street with a pack of illegal cigarettes that you bought on the Native Reserve and getting a lifetime ban. I don't see any Supreme Courts ruling in our favor, in my favor, or anybody's favor. Not that I need weapons. I could care less, like I said, about the weapons. I don't need them. My weapon's in my hand. It's called my phone. And when I pull it out, it, it's, it can be pretty painful for some people, depending on the topic I'm talking about. You know, if I catch you and you're a sexual predator, and I catch you on my phone, guess what? That'll hurt you more than me giving you a left hook or an overhand right to the jaw, right? In my eyes. <laughs> I'm gonna shame you. You're gonna get into the hall of shame. So don't stand for what's going on, all the bullshit up in Ottawa right now with the uh, inquiry. That's what they're calling it. An inquiry, my ass. It's one-sided. You know, till we start hearing other sides, okay, and you fucking call me to the inquiry. I wasn't part of the convoy. Yeah, I drive a diesel truck, but I went up there by myself to protest what again? Mm. I think I said it in all my videos back in January. Yeah, I, st I stand with the convoy. I stand with the, the non-vaccinated people that had their rights fucking trampled on, okay, because they wouldn't get the vaccination. Uh, they've lost their jobs. You can't cross the border. People's freedoms were taken away. I stand with that, but I stand for the cost of living, okay, and everything else that was, was happening at that time that's manifesting now into something even bigger. I stated two years ago, in three years, Canada will be the next Venezuela of the North, and I'm on year two, so we got another year, and I think that prediction's coming through, right? Uh, it's going to be true, because right now, a lot of people are feeling it, and you're going to only feel the pinch. When you start seeing 77% of food banks, I just heard this, 77% jump at the food banks. Food banks don't have enough food. That's scary times, folks. Brenda, Elton, we got Elton Robinson, Diane Bashard, got a lot of people watching here that have been on. Mark Taylor, you know, it is what it is. I tell the truth the way that, the way that I see it anyways, and... The world's pretty fucked up. Stop calling what? Uh, calling it a vaccine? It's not a vaccine. It's a fucking water. Okay, they're putting water in a syringe, giving it to people. Uh, false hope. That's what they're given. And they were selling it. They were buying it. Billions of dollars of our money went that route. $400 billion he spent of our money. And this is what we have now, right? We, it's a broken system. Yep. It's broken, big time. You know, and they're telling people to go to uh, your students, yeah. Students hitting the food banks, it's pretty hard, man. Very hard. How do you live on $15 an hour, by the way? If I told you what I make, my boss would get mad, but I, I do really well, really, really, really well, and I'm happy where I'm at. I just got to work a lot of hours to get to where I'm at, right? Uh, but that opportunity's there for me, and I'm grabbing it right by the horns. And that's been going on for three years. Phil, good old Phil, Karen Hebert. So if you're pissed off about paying the high uh, Savuth, you're paying the high prices in food and gas and housing and everything else. And if you stand up, like I said, part of our Constitution and our Charter of Rights is the right to protest peacefully in, de in a demonstration. <laughs> That's been going on forever. But if you stand up and you tell the government that you're pissed off about the cost of living, the housing crisis, the cost of food, 
the food shortages, the cost of fuel or anything, they automatically put you in that, uh, in that bag called the convoy. So you have to watch out what you say, right? It's a joke. It's sad. Trudeau needs to go. He needs to go now. And he needs to go really fast because he's pissing off a lot of people. You see what happened down in the States today. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband, somebody took a hammer to him. Now, I don't incite violence whatsoever. I'm not there. I'm not that type of guy. That's where it's coming to for a lot of people, right? They're losing it. When you can't live on $1,000 a week take home. $1,000 a week used to be, you're living pretty damn good on a grand a week. If you could take that home, right? There's a lot of people that are making $1,000 a week and they can't cut the cheese. They can't even buy cheese. You know, try and raise a kid in this, in, in, in this time. Crazy times. When Trudeau, I'm going to read this one from Andrew. When Trudeau, the next guy, will do the same. We need, you know, oh, <laughs> you know it. The World Economic, uh, uh, the, the World Economic, Forum's got to be gone, the economic forum. You're right, 100%. Yeah, they're all turds. So I don't know if Pierre Polyev, if that's, we're going to get uh, uh, the Antichrist with this guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know much about him. I like what he says. He's got a lot of good points. But I don't trust any of these creeps anymore, man. Yeah, 900 a month. Imagine being on that thing called CPP, the Canada Pension Plan. Let's talk about that one for a second. <laughs> What's that pay? Anybody on here on CPP? Because I'm never going to collect CPP. I'm working till I'm fucking 82 if I live to 82. If I live to, I'm going to be the guy who drops down, dies on the job because I get more insurance if I die at work than if I do at home. All right, so i got to leave something for the, for the family. <laughs> 1200 for old age pension. Hmm. How in the hell do you live on 1200 a month? When a one bedroom, let's say, let's get modest here, okay? I, I own my house. My mortgage is $800 a month or whatever, right? Uh, let's say that you're $1,200 a month and you're in a one bedroom apartment. You're going to pay $900 a month, let's say, for the one bedroom apartment. That's probably on the low side. So you got $300 a month to pay for your food. <laughs> you have right. Okay, your food, your clothing. Uh, if you got to pay for gas, you got to pay for hydro. Everything's gone up, man. It's crazy. They get roughly 1000 bucks each a month. You know, Savuth, you know, I wonder if you could collect Canada pension abroad living in another country. I'd go back to, I'd go to Vietnam or Cambodia or Costa Rica, wherever, wherever, if you could. Yeah, you can't even pay the bills, but I'm paying if, uh, what is it, 30, I think it's, it went up, 3,200 a year in CPP. And I can't dispute it, it comes, it comes right off my, uh, right off my paycheck, right? Like income tax and everything else. I can't hold back. I don't have a choice in the matter. This is what you pay. Right, and they're, they're jacking it up. Every It just seems, just it's getting out of hand. It's crazy. Really, it is. Ask Alan. We don't, uh, the bills, mortgage, people starve. Yeah, right. Hey, you're going to create a lot of thiefing. You're going to create a lot of criminals. That's what the government's going to do. They're going to create a lot of law-abiding citizens to break the law because you know what? If I didn't have food to feed my family, what do you think I would do? It's not rocket science. I'm going to steal. I'm going to do what I have to do to feed my family, right? And I, I, I don't sh look down upon people that have to, to, to go to those extremes because it's coming that route, right? Uh, it's sad. It's very sad, man. You know, it's only a matter of time before people start eating dogs and cats and whatever they could find, right? Raccoons, squirrels. Not cool. Not cool at all. Hey, Jerry, what's happening? Yeah, so like I just said, the government, I came on here to talk more about the government uh, overturning the uh, sex registry bill, okay? So now sex registers won't be, there won't be no sex registry, so we won't know who's who, right? Sad, very sad. 
Taxes and insurance are getting way out of the... Everything's gone up. A buddy of mine got into an accident. His car was worth 15 grand. The insurance company gave him five. This is what you get. And I laughed. He said, I said, how long have you been with that insurance company? He said, his whole life. 20 years. 20 years he's been since he's been driving. I said, you've been probably paying $2,500 a year minimal for car insurance. And you get into an accident and they roll right off the car and they gave him five grand. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. Here's your five grand. It's a scam. Government scams. Yeah, it's sad. It's, you know what? I feel for a lot of people. Really, I do. You know, I could walk into work tomorrow and because I work for a billion dollar corporation, they could go belly up tomorrow. I could walk into work and there'd be a lock on the door. And guess what? Where do I go? What do I do? And you're going to see a lot of that going on very soon, right? So honker down, save your money, do whatever you can, right? Whatever you can save. Just don't let the government know what you're saving because you know what? If you save $10, they're going to want seven of it. They're going to find a way to get their greedy hands on it, right? So until something changes and, you know, you could change faces in, 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 at, at Parliament Hill. I don't think anything's going to change. You think Pierre Polyev is going to cut back on taxes? No, I don't think so. We're so far in debt. Just see the, the COVID bullshit brought us up half a trillion dollars behind the eight ball, right? So it's sad. Yeah, you feed, you feed your kids before... I eat, and I go three days without eating. Well, that's not cool, Ann. That's not cool at all. That's not cool at all. Not cool at all. You know what? That that breaks my fucking heart. Really, it does. That, you, you, that, that breaks my fucking heart, what you just said. You know, it reminds me of... Uh, my parents used to tell me uh, back in the uh, 1950s and stuff and uh, the, the way things were, you know, you're either poor or you were rich. There was no in between. And, uh, you know, the, everybody had big families back then. As Lucier, my daddy, the, the, my dad had six boys. I'm the last of the six boys, right? Uh, and then had a girl. So there's seven of us in, in just in my family, right? His family had 11 or 12, right? So you can afford that. Imagine a, a guy at work says, yeah, he wants to have a baby. I said, only have one. He said, what do you mean? Why? I said, because you'll never be able to afford two or three or four or five or six or seven. You know, you, yeah, you get child tax credit, all that crap. But believe me, it's not going to cut it for the, uh, the, the milk and the uh, diapers and everything else that comes with children, right? Clothing and... You know, everything else. Kids are expensive. Now I'm not, I'm happy I got my three kids. I'm just happy my three kids are at an age now where they're all working. And my son, he, well, he's not working yet, but he's he could go any day if he wants to go work. Steve Spencer, the Halloween party I heard tomorrow, eh? I got to work, buddy, but I'm going to try and make it by. I don't know what I'm going to go out as. But I don't believe any of these politicians, like I said, you know, they're just taking and taking and taking and not giving anything really, <laughs> not giving anything back. I guess they did during the COVID, they were giving people $30,000 checks. I never took one, one penny for COVID, not one. And I never got sick once either, but I never took one cent. So I seen it when it was happening. I said, this is a scam. People are going to get screwed by the government. Well, everybody's getting screwed by the government, even me, the guy who never took a cent. You know, I could have easily said, yeah, yeah, I got a business, took 30 grand, started a business, took 30 grand here, 30 grand there. They're just giving it away like no tomorrow. And now we have to pay it back, right? So I never took a cent, and I am doing my part, I guess, as a Canadian to pay it back. But I never got anything in, in return, right? Neither did my wife, neither did my kids. I didn't play that game. I knew it was a scam from the get-go as soon as the government opened her mouth. But then when I seen the billions shelling out and going, who's going to pay for this? We are. But the government says, we gave you the government of, uh, of, of Canada. We gave you. No, we're the government of Canada. They worked for us. 
Trudeau works for us. So when you have a company that's not working, what happens? Okay, either the company goes bankrupt or you get rid of the fucking chief executive officer, which would be, what, the prime minister? <laughs> He's got to go, right? So he works for us. And at the end of the day, all every politician works for us. And when they don't do their jobs, you try and hold them accountable uh, uh, by having a protest, which is fucking 100% legal under our charter of rights. What happens? You become part of the the convoy. So, with all that being said, stay tuned. Shit's gonna hit the fan. It did for Nancy Pelosi's husband. There, I heard shit did hit the fan for that guy. But you're gonna see a lot more of that kind of shit going on. Yeah, uh, the food banks. I don't know. Uh, you know, and I was on a good path with the food banks. Very good path when I was giving marijuana away for food. I was filling the food banks. <laughs> Filling the food banks. Now, just off of my mind, I know I'm going to forget some. Uh, Street Help filled their food bank. The Kids Shelter, or the Kids Food Bank, yeah, the Kids Food Bank, filled their food bank the day that they closed their doors because they didn't have food. I pulled up with, uh, the deal was, I don't know, I went to the superstore. They said, we'll match it buck for buck. It's okay, I'll throw a couple grand down, right? So they did. Boom, boom, boom. There was so much food that they reopened their doors. The Downtown Mission, the Salvation Army, the Women's Shelter, uh, the Drulard, one on Drulard Road. I filled every food bank in this city that I could find, right, uh, by giving away, what, marijuana. And a lot of people didn't like that. A lot of people did like that, sorry. A minority of people didn't like that. The OPP, the Windsor PD, the fucking Drew Dilkins, uh, whoever, right? Uh, and they came down and, uh, yeah, I don't do drugs either. <laughs> You don't drink? Yeah, I don't drink much. Maybe two beers a month. Smoking? I smoke cigarettes. That's me. But I, I did what I did, and I put my own liberty and my own freedoms on the lines for what I believe in, because that's what I do, right? And, yeah, marijuana was legal at the time, and it still is. Well, they call it legal. I call it the not even decriminalized, right? So, Because if you get caught, it don't have that uh, Ontario package sticker on it. Even though you're allowed to grow it, there's a quagmire laws through it. You know, I know the laws. I know what's right, what's wrong, right? But like I said, I gave marijuana, and I gave, I'll say it right here, I gave over a million dollars worth of marijuana away for free. For free. You brought a canned good, you got a joint. You brought a bunch of canned goods, you got a lot of joints. That's the way it rolled, right? And like I said, it was well worth it. And if that was to still go on, some kind of charity like that, where would the food banks be today? I don't think we'd have a shortage of food in the food banks, and food banks would be closing down, right? So I did what I did, and that's what I did, and I still I still pay in the piper for it. That's a fact. You know, still tied up in court. I just don't know where uh, or when, but I know the hammer's still coming down somewhere on me. And uh, so when those days come, I'll have to go live, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know. I'm honest. I'm honest that way. So with that being said, don't take any more shit from the government. Stand up for your rights. You know, just don't bring any transport trucks with you or you'll be part of the convoy. That's pretty sad, eh? Thanks for watching, guys.